It's man versus food. <laughs> Man's gonna win. Man versus food. Man's gonna win. <laughs> What's up guys? I'm finally doing it. I'm here at Nagin restaurant in Campbell, California, and we're gonna take you through the Persian dining experience. People have been asking me what to eat when you come to a Persian restaurant, how to pronounce the appetizers versus the main entrees, and we're gonna walk you through the whole dining experience, how to build it up if you're trying to bulk up, or how to eat and order properly. Even when Hadi Chopin was here, he ate at this very restaurant while he was dining, getting ready for the Olympia. So let's check it out. Oh my God. What do you want? I want um, this and Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do you have Tadik? Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's we want to do Tadik. Um why don't you do half Rayma, half warm sabzi um for the Tadik, Master Musir. Then what we'll have is a salad shirazi. Yeah, and then why don't you do one other tadik with fesinger? I'm here with my right-hand man, Nick Irby. I've turned him into a just honorary Persian connoisseur. Persian connoisseur. We got Cam, the man. Cam. I'm his dad, my dad's son. <laughs> yeah, he's the dad's son. And he loves Persian food. And what we're going to do is we're going to break down exactly what we ordered. So what we have here is we have Mirza Qasimi. It comes from the northern part of Iran, where my family is from, my parents are from. And so it's roasted eggplant that's been mashed up and then roasted with garlic as well as eggs. Um, sometimes they use a little bit more tomato, sometimes a little bit less tomato. Because of the fact that the eggplants are actually kind of smoked and then roasted, it gets a really good smoke flavor. And with that garlic, the egg, and a little bit of that tomato, it really turns into something really nice because you can use that as kind of an appetizer or some people will eat that with bread or with rice and make it into a main course. We have a salad here called Salad Shirazi named after the city where Hadi Chopin is actually from and that's tomato, onion, as well as uh, cucumber. Then we have a very thick yogurt with shallots called Masa Musir. So most is, is yogurt and it's basically been drained. So it's got very little moisture to it. It's very, very good with bread. And then they'll sometimes put onion with it and the onions that we're talking about right there. This is the Persian onion. Most people who don't like onions eventually do, especially if you eat a lot of Persian food. And Nick used to like onion a little bit. Now, how much do you like onion now? Oh. Show, show them how, how a Persian show them how a Persian eats onion. I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Get a slice per piece. We call that a one-to-one -one ratio. One piece of onion to one piece of kebab. It takes it to a whole nother level. <laughs> Just watch out, this is not a first date dinner because- Because you will go like this. <laughs> yes, you get the Persian kubide burps. They're notorious, it, it's They're not stinky. good, very stinky. And you gotta remember- And you'll break up. And you'll break up. <laughs> and then we have another must, which is um, actually yogurt with cucumber. Now we also have Fesinjun. This was one, the one stew I couldn't pronounce growing up. It's called Fesinjun. For whatever reason, I used to just tell my mom, can you please make it for me? And she says, well, what do you want? Which stew? And I would just say, the black stuff. Give me the black stuff. And that's what I, that's on top of the tadik, which is the crystallized rice that's made on the bottom of the big pots. So what's actually in it is it's ground walnuts, with pomegranate sauce. They use a pomegranate puree and they'll add sugar to it to make it sweet. And then they'll blend it all up and then they'll let it actually steep with some kind of protein, usually chicken. We have two stews. 
that are absolutely delicious. You have the guest for you because he loves this. You have the lentil stew, fame, and then we have warm asante. <laughs> Another great thing about Persian food is it's pretty much gluten-free. Besides the bread, there's really no gluten in any of the food because of the rice, because of the chicken, because of the stews, don't contain any wheat. So if you're gluten sensitive or gluten intolerant like me, it's a great, great option. All right, guys, one of the things you always see me travel around with is Evo Log. Whether it's myself, my wife, a lot of our athletes on cheap meals, we like to use Evo Log because not only will it help you break down the foods and absorb them better, but you're also going to get a much less bloat because you have actual enzymes that help break down the carbs, the proteins, and the fats. So make sure you're using something similar, whether it's Evo Log or you want to try to use a different brand. I advise it highly because at the end of the day, you want to utilize all of these foods. Hey guys, this is how you really bulk. You don't use a regular spoon. A regular spoon is for camera. What's this more like? That's more like it. <laughs> this is a shovel. No. <laughs> all right, guys, we had an amazing dinner here at Nagin. I'm gonna go ahead and put all the macros down and all the names of the dishes. For those that are looking to diet off of this, again, Hadi dieted here at this restaurant for the last several weeks getting ready for the Olympia because they were able to make them chicken breast, they were bringing them steak, no oil, and they were giving them rice with no oil and salad. And that's what he was eating, getting ready for the show. So again, you can diet at a, a Persian restaurant, but you've got to make sure that you let them know no butter, no oil. And for those that are doing off season, obviously like we did tonight, because I have been on my 10 year off season right now, and it has been amazing because we had a great appetizer set up. We had really, really good kebabs. We had both chicken, we had beef. And on top of it, we're gonna get some Persian ice cream to go. Pistachio ice cream, ice cream along with a little hint of rose water because Persians tend to put rose water on a ton of different things, especially their pastries and their desserts. But at the end of the day, I'm hoping you'll try this food because not only is it good for you, but it is amazingly delicious. Again, this was something that I got to do. Everyone keeps asking, I've been asked for the last 15 years to do a Persian meal program. And I was able to do it for video on video for you. So hopefully you like it. Let me know what you like and definitely subscribe, definitely comment and tell me what you'd like to see on my channel. Take care guys. And if you like this video, hit a like. If you don't like this video, also hit a like and subscribe. Bye.